heart. Uh, so I got a um, communication from uh, Shemela this morning, and these are the Bibles that uh, have been purchased. So um, these are the picture Bibles for the young kids. And then um, the last slide uh, right there, those are the um, Bibles that are going to be for the um, older kids, uh, the uh, teenagers. And such. So um, they're uh, in, and they will be distributed to the children tomorrow. Well, for us tomorrow, will probably be sometime overnight. Uh, for us, because they're nine hours ahead. But uh, just as a reminder, uh, what we're looking for is please continue to pray. Uh, just as a reminder, Shemela is calling this ministry now Faith Community Church Sunday School, which is pretty incredible. Um, and she lives in Okara, Pakistan, so if you could keep uh, Okara up in prayer. And the village that she is doing this work in, it's incredible, it doesn't even have a name. It's uh, Village 11-4L. So if you keep uh, that up in prayer. And uh, these are, again, some of the things that we're looking to uh, get funding for. Um, the uh, monthly Sunday school, it costs $200 to put that uh, together. A Sunday service, uh, when they get the parents together as well, costs $300. We're still working to get what uh, there might be uh, pricing because they have needs for fresh water. Uh, they have needs for toiletries, clothing, and shoes. And uh, long range, uh, what would help them greatly is if they had their own water filtration. So we're waiting to see what that's going to cost. But thank you so much for the support of this ministry. It's, uh, it's incredible. And uh, the work that's being done uh, related to this, I can just tell you, I talk to people outside of our church, and everybody I talk to wants to give. So we are going to be creating a separate account and PayPal and Venmo uh, means for folks to be able to, uh, to, to donate. So again, thank you so much. This is your ministry, and I thank you so much uh, for supporting it. And with that, I hope you will join me in praise and worship this morning.
found in Ephesians chapter 2, if we'll stand for the reading of God's Word. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I found that, uh, that's Sam up there, by the way. I asked Sam to lead us in prayer, and you can see his eyes. Can't get that picture out of my head. Today I want to speak about the gentleness of love's embrace. And as you know by now, I'm covering this sign sentence by sentence. I want to be more respectful of love itself. Now God is love. But as soon as we say God, the Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, then all of a sudden we go to our doctrinal pictures in our head. I want you to understand love. That is God. You can't connect with God without connecting with love. So, I want to be more respectful of love itself and not just the people it travels through. I want to embrace its peace, applaud its creativity, and thank its tenderness. I want to admire the bravery of love's open and willing hand and acknowledge strength, the adversity, the up off of its knees fortitude, and then for today, and the gentleness of its embrace. The gentleness of its embrace. Whenever we connect with God or God is connecting with us, we have to love. Love has to be released. I think we have taste and see that God is good, and we sense that. And referring to last week's message in Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I spoke of chapter, verse 10 through the rest of the chapter. All these things happen if you don't hear God and do the will of God. And then today I want to briefly reflect on the first nine verses of Deuteronomy 28. And I want to talk about the gentleness of love's embrace. Otherwise, if you hear the Lord, now, now there's, the, there's the key right there. If you hear the word of the Lord, and then I had another subtitle I had to add in there, is Don't Miss the Intro, and I'll talk about that briefly. But as Mark read, we are saved by grace. Grace saves us. God's love saves us. In Deuteronomy 28, and again, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the personality of God has not changed. The truths of God have not changed. The only thing that's changed is the sacrifice, and that was Jesus Christ. So no longer do we have to obey all these laws, these do's and don'ts, and make all these sacrifices weekly, monthly, and annually in order to be right with God. We're right with God when we ask Jesus Christ into our life. Then in verse 20, chapter 28, now I'm not going to read all these verses, I'm just going to reflect on them quickly. But I want you to read or listen to Deuteronomy 28, 1. It shall come to pass if and circle that if you circle your Bibles, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the Lord, the voice of the Lord thy God. That's it. That's it. You can stop right there. That's it. If we understand that hearing God, we will do all these things. Because hearing and knowing God, we just automatically do those things. Now I want to briefly walk through the next verses. If you observe to do the commandments when I, which I've commanded you this day, the Lord thy God will set thee on high above the nations. And then he goes into all these blessings. You'll, he'll overtake you. He'll hearken, if you hearken to his voice, he'll bless you in the city. He'll bless you in the field. He'll bless the fruit of your body. He'll bless the, bless the fruit of your ground. He'll bless your basket. He'll uh, bless 
uh, you'll be blessed coming in, going out. And whatever you do shall be blessed. And so he goes for nine verses, blessings, blessings, blessings. And because we're natural people, we love that. I mean, how many people don't want another blessing in your life? No, 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 you, you want blessings. You want... I remember I asked years ago, I asked the audience, uh, if, you, if God never answered another prayer of yours, how many of you would still follow him? And most every hand went up. Eh, that's doubtful. Because God is a God of blessing. How can you know him and not be blessed? How can you know him and not ask for Because there's always more, because there's always more of God. But the key here is if you hear the word of the Lord. See, it's all about him and not so much about yourself. Now, that's hard to understand. Because when it's all about him, then you're blessed in everything that you can do. If you hear me, hear the Lord. This is who you are. Because of who you are is how you will live and the blessings will follow. But you back up. If you hear the Lord. So what's the Lord saying to you today in your life? Now, who is the gospel of Jesus Christ written for? I found it amusing years ago, and I reflected on this again this week, uh, the rag muffin gospel, and uh, I get a chuckle out of his introduction. And he's talking about the rag muffin gospel, or otherwise, who's the gospel written for? And see if you identify with any of these. If this is any of you, or you know somebody that this fits, or this was you, uh, you did have that understanding, that sort of thing. Okay, this book is not for the super spiritual. If you've arrived, you don't want to read this book. It's not for the mus <clears throat> muscular Christian who have made John Wayne and not Jesus their hero. He's getting a little personal there. I got a picture at home of the man with, a, with holsters on, and one holster he has the Bible, and the other holster he has the gun. Uh, but never, never mind, let's move on. It's not for the academics who would, who would imprison Jesus in their ivory tower of exegesis. Otherwise, uh, the last seminary I attended, uh, I turned in my uh, paper, and this man says, uh, you're not a theologian. <laughs> and I laughed. I said, I never claimed to be a theologian. I'm a student of, I'm learning, but I never claimed to be a theologian. And then I bit my tongue, so I would not say, and neither are you who don't believe in Jesus Christ or the Word of God. Uh, and, and, so I, you know, and, and so he let me know that uh, I was not a theologian. Uh, it's not for the noisy the feel-good folks manipulate Christianity into a naked appeal for emotion. Get all excited about Jesus, and when, I, when we get to heaven, I'm going to run up and, and I'm going to jump on Jesus' lap. <laughs> no, you're not. It's not for the hooded mystic who want magic in their religion. I can't show you the trick of the supernatural, but it's there. It's not for the hallelujah Christian who live only on mountaintops, who never visited the valley of desolation. My wife was counseling somebody when we read our, uh, uh, published our fir first book and people were responding and, and my wife said something about desolation and somebody else types back, now let's stay in, the, let's stay in happy town. People, life's not in happy town even if you're a charismatic Christian. We know that. It's not for the fearless or the tearless. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to cry. It's not for the red-hot zealots who boast with the rich young God, ruler of the Gospels, all these commandments I have kept from my youth. Otherwise, touch not, taste not, handle not, it's not for them. It's not for the, complicant, uh, the complacent who hoist over their shoulders a tote bag of honors, dipl diplomas, and good works, actually believing they've made it. Look at me, where I am now. It's not for the legalist who would rather surrender control of their souls to rules than run the risk of living in union with Jesus Christ. And that type of person doesn't want to hear people, we need to love people more than we love our doctrines. If anyone is still reading along, he says, the ragmuffin gospel was written for the beragged, the beat up, the burnt out, or as we say in this church, the least, the lost, the lonely, the left out, and the invisible. It's for the sorely burdened who are still shifting the heavy suitcase from one hand to the other. It's like, you know, life gets heavy sometimes. It's for the wobbly, the weak knees, 
who know they don't have it all together and are too proud to accept a handout of amazing grace. I just don't deserve it. Yes, you do if you have Jesus. It is for the inconsistent, unsteady disciples whose cheese is falling off their cracker. Uh, uh, that, that, that's what made me think of this book, and I went and looked it up. Do you ever feel like your cheese just keeps falling off the cracker? You know, at my house, cheese falls off my cracker. Uh, little Sammy, our little dog, <laughs> eats it, and he's looking for more. And I'm looking at my bare cracker. You know, do you ever feel life is like that? It is for the poor, the weak, the sinful men and women with hereditary faults and limited talents. Otherwise, what have you inherited? both good and bad. It's for the earthen vessels who shuffle along on feet of clay. They, have you ever been in a dream and you want to run, but you just can't run, you're late, you just can't pick up and go? Do you ever feel that way with God? It's like you want to, but you just can't get there. And, and, and I like this one too. It's for the smart people who know they are stupid and honest disciples who admit they're scallywags. Otherwise, people who have faults. Does that ring a bell with anybody? That's who the gospel is written for. Now, when we understand that, then in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul is saying, I'm, I'm, I, I just don't feel that I'm there. Matter of fact, if we'll just turn there, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. If you just figure that sometimes you're not there, for this thing I besought the Lord three times. Otherwise, God, take this from me. Now, now listen, okay. God, take this from me. Take this from me. Go to, Lord, I've given that to you over and over. And here it is again, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, the Lord, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecution and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Otherwise, when we humble ourselves and say, God, we can't do it on our own. I've tried and tried and tried. And God says, good, now that you understand you're weak, I will give you strength. And so we accept that from God. Now, also in this book, he continues, and I just want to read a short paragraph here he says too many christians are living in the house of fear not in the house of love you cannot live in fear and be in god's love there is no fear in love there is no fear in god and so if we're fearing in the times that we have these setbacks then what are we what part of god are we missing he goes ahead to say our culture has made the word grace impossible to understand because we resonate with slogans like there's no free lunch, you get what you deserve, you want money, work for it, you want love, earn it, you want mercy, show you deserve it, do unto others before they do unto you, watch out for welfare lines, the shiftless people, uh, free hot dogs at school, affluent students with federal loans, it's a con game. And by all means, give others what they deserve, but not one penny more. And then he says, he once heard a Sunday school teacher correcting a little boy and said, God loves good little boys. Now, how many times have we heard that? God loves good little boys. Hello. God loves bad little boys, too. And see, so what we do, we're conditioned to think we earn God's grace that we earn these blessings from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. If we do these things, we'll get from God. The reason we get from God is because we received Jesus Christ. And we hear Him in our lives and we live accordingly. It's not to get things, it's that we love Jesus. So I ask you this morning, are you in love with God? Are you in love with God because you can get from God? See, there's that flesh always battling back and forth. The issue is to love God. Then he goes ahead and the emphasis is on what I do rather than what God is doing or what God has already done. 
So to reiterate, too many Christians are living in the house of fear and not the house of love. But then I added to that as I meditated on that one line. Too many Christians are living in the house of bondage instead of the house of freedom. Too many Christians are living in the house of condemnation instead of the house of forgiving. Too many Christians are living in the house of pride instead of the house of humility. Or too many Christians are living, listen, in the house of religion instead of the house of life. Too many Christians are living in the house of heaviness instead of the house of joy. And above all, too many Christians live in all the above instead of the house of love. Now, people, you got to listen to the rest of this message. This is for us today. This is for direction for this church today. I'm talking about today. Mark it in your Bibles. Write the date down and watch for tomorrow. The mother church that I came from in Kansas City, and there were like 14 sister churches or churches underneath this man, was Full Faith Church of Love. It's since changed its name with another pastor, the other one passed away. Full Faith Church of Love. And that was really funny back then because that was the beginning of the charismatic movement, early, uh, early 70s. And so one of the elders was kind of embarrassed over that. And he said, why don't we drop of love and just add full faith church? Because that means we, we believe the whole thing. And the word came forward, you live up to the rest of that name. Full faith, church of love. And so it sounded kind of silly and it sounded kind of, but it was a challenge from God. And I was thinking about that this morning and last night, and, and I shared with Pastor Kevin while we were praying this morning. What if we changed our name to Faith Community House of Love? Now, now some of you say, or are we going to do that? Well, my question is, are you going to live up to it? You're either going to help it or you're going to hinder it. You say, well, well, well are we going to? I'm not going to tell you. Think about it. Full faith, that, 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 house of love. The challenge, because love is God. So we could say full faith, house of God, but we're not. But how about a new slogan? Full faith, that, 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 house of love. That's a challenge, people. And anything short of that in your life or your understanding means get more of God because you're missing it somewhere. Now, I'm, I'm talking to me, okay? And, you know, I assume I'm talking to some of you. So when we're not, see, when we're, when we're caught, we're not in love. When we have baggage, we're missing love. When we have condemnation, guilt, and na 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 people, then we're missing Him. We're missing love. See, in Ephesians, we're told, for by grace are you saved. See, grace is divine favor, freely given. It's unmerited favor. You didn't earn it. Jesus was a sacrifice, and he gave his love to you. One author writes, a saint is not someone who is good, but who experiences the goodness of God. See, you don't be good and have blessings and miracles and on and on, and therefore you're a saint. You're a saint when you ask Jesus Christ into your life. You just are. He makes you. And so think about it, and I've said it over and over, but would you really do it? Make a business card and put saint and then your name. Oh, who are you? Well, I'm here. You're, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, the Word of God says I am. You're a saint with God. Another author the church is not a museum for saints, but a hospital for sinners. The church is not a museum for saints, but a hospital for sinners. Again, I reflect back a couple years, a year ago, two women came to our church. I, didn't, I met them in, in hospice. Sounded good. Sound, I mean, we were right on. They loved Billy Graham, and they loved this man and that man, and, and you know, they'd quote scripture, and, and we just connected, and I gave her husband's funeral, uh, and so she came to our church, and, and she enjoyed the worship, and she enjoyed the, 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 uh, the message, because she wrote me a long letter, and she says, but, but, but pastor, I've got to tell you, we realize there's sin in your church. 
course, I had to rip it up, you know, you know, go somewhere else. Of course there's sin in our church. I hope the church is filled with sinners. Every vile sinner and all those little sneaky sinners that look good. I mean, that's most of us. I hope there's sin in our church because Paul says if you're without sin, you're a liar. We all have sinned because it's just the natural. But the condemnation stops at the cross and Jesus comes into our life and cleanses us. We don't get that. All right, we're still wrestling with it up here and we're still doing some of those things. We, but our heart Jesus has cleansed and he looks at us, God looks at us through the cross of Jesus Christ. God looks at us with love and he can't do anything but love us. And the more we know him, the more we love him. And so I really think the church is both. The church is, you should be able to come in and say, look around and say, oh, I see how saints live. And also when you see sinners, you say, welcome home. Because that was what God said to us when we met Jesus. Well, sinner, welcome home. Here's my son. Here's forgiveness. Here's my love. And so, when we look at Scripture, don't miss the intro. That first verse. Don't miss the intro. If you hear the word of the Lord, all this will happen. Or you can turn to the other Scriptures and, and, and you matter of fact, I'll just turn there. I'm in Corinthians. So I'll flip over to Galatians. Don't miss the intro in any scripture you're reading. Don't miss the intro of the chapter. Because if you get that, then the chapter happens. Okay? If you hear the word of the Lord and you got to do it, you just, that's God, then all of that will happen because you live so that that happens. Well, then what happens if it doesn't happen and there's ugly and, 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 and horrible things happen in our life? Well, it rains on the just and the unjust, and, and who are we not to have it be rained on? Why? Because the Lord's still with us through it all. Through it all, He's still there. I mean, when you get to heaven, what's going with you? Nothing down here. No sin up there. So we look at each other and say, oh my word, we have Jesus, we have forgiveness, we have love. That's why we can love and be one. Because in the natural, we're not going to love each other. In the natural, we're not going to, to, to be one. But in Christ, we are. And so, starting in Galatians, he's talking about brothers and sisters in the Lord. Grace and peace be to you. He doesn't say condemnation and guilt. He says grace and peace be to you. In Ephesians chapter 1, blessed be the Lord God who blesses us in all things. That's Ephesians, uh, the very first verse. Let's go to Philippians. And Paul says grace and be peace and, and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank God for remembrance of all of you. See, I pray for all of you. Matter of fact, I know where most of you sit, and I just kind of go through the, I got, I go through the, uh, the sanctuary in my mind, and I pray, you know, and, and I pray <clears throat> yeah. during the week, I'll walk by and lay hands on all the pews for everybody who's going to sit there and who's going to be blessed there. And why, I, thank, remember, I thank God for you. Why? Because we're one family in the house of God. And so... It's not emphasis on what we've done. The emphasis is on what God is doing in our lives, in your life. But it's also emphasis is to be on what Christ has already done. Now, I want to read this. I got a real chuckle out of this. You got to, you got to follow me here. Our approach to the Christian life is as observed as the enthusiastic young man who had just received his plumber's license and was taken to see Niagara Falls. He studied it for a minute and then said, I think I can fix this. You know, isn't that Christianity? I think I can fix this. People, it was fixed on the cross. It was fixed on the cross. And so when we go to Jesus and we understand his love, then it's the Father's glory in us. In John chapter 17, Jesus is talking to his father. And he says, Father, what love 
what, what glory you've given me, I have now given them. We don't get that. We don't get that. The glory that you've given me, I've given them. We need to understand the glory of God in our lives. Now, here's something that you got to catch. This is a new direction. As I was praying this morning before Kevin got here, matter of fact, I got up and I, I put the little note for Mark, Mark or where Mark Reese was going to read, and, and, and as I was writing it out, I started to get up, and, and the word came to me, well, if you're going to pray, take a notebook. Otherwise, if you want to hear God, take a notebook. You might want to do that, people, and then just sit and see what comes to you. And here's what came to me as I was praying. The house of love. Now, if we're preaching God's love, do we really, really believe it? I mean, how did you feel when I said, you know, we could change our name to Faith Community House of Love? Now, <laughs> if you balked at any of that, why? I'll be honest, I balked, <laughs> okay? But not, not a whole lot. Uh, whoa, what a challenge that would be. Whoa. And I can make a, you know, and, and then I started thinking of all, I'm not even going there. Instead, I went this way. Really? Could we really do that? Then here's some thoughts that came to me. Melissa. I get about eight of them this morning. Be love and send love. Love to you, love through you. Now that's absolutely impossible except when Jesus Christ is present. Now it's easy to love the good people, the easy people. We're, he's talking about love, that's who you are. He's talking about love, that's who we're to be. Years ago when he first moved into this building, the pastor that was here before brought a family in about a year later and wanted to show him the building, them the building. And he's standing right over there and he's talking to them and I'm standing over here. And this pulpit used to be high, 15 feet high, the top of it. And, you know, Presbyterians, they'd climb up here and, you know, and we cut it off. And uh, I, I climbed up there once. I can't, I can't no, I, I'm not going up there. And so this lectern used to be over there, uh, and so we moved it here. And so the pastor says, uh, oh, what, uh, you moved the lectern there, why is that? Oh, that's... Uh, uh, let's see, you've got to come through the Word to get to the altar. Is that right? Well, I know, you know, they're big on, on I said, yeah, that's right. Actually, it's here because I can see you both easily. But nevertheless, it's a good concept. Come across the Word to get to the altar. Then I thought later, and people, I do believe in the, I believe in the sanctity of the altar. I really do. The platform. I don't want you up here unless you're asked up here. There's a concept. If you come on the platform, you've earned it with, with responsibilities and you know but I thought later I should have said he's not up there he's in here and that's why we can have the pulpit here or over there or over there have it right there because Jesus isn't you know up here see this all represents the Old Testament and coming into the altar of God to the gates of thanksgiving into his courts with praise and worship him and work your way up to the holy of holies that's what all the, that's why church is set up this way i understand that and i respect that but jesus isn't up here he's in here and so as i thought about that another word let jesus in to let him out you having trouble with somebody you're having trouble communicating let jesus in then let him out he'll take care of the problem why do we ever hurt people now listen to this because love was hurt see when we have expectation of wholeness and somebody violates that it hurts we know that all through our lives. Well, wait a minute, I was expecting, you know, you know, I accepted you and you slandered me. I accepted you and you did me wrong. I accepted you and acceptance is of love. When you love, you accept the person, not the issue. And so when we're violated, what happened? The love in us was violated. Why'd you do that to me? 
and people, and I'm guilty of this. I'm, I can remember, I want to really be honest with you this morning. People, I got set free on, I just, all of a sudden, it's like, doesn't matter because love is here. I don't care. People, <laughs> Say something funny, Kathy, so I can get over this. <laughs> you expected what was right, and it was wrong. See, love is whole, and violations break it. So what do we do? Why, why do we expect more in our life all the time? Why do we expect more? I'm talking about good stuff. I'm talking about tangible stuff, I'm talking about spiritual stuff, because God is so much more. And we have this spirit thing pulling, saying, fill with God. And, and we don't get it, so we think, fill with stuff. And I'm talking about miracles, and you know, I'm talking about good stuff. No, 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 fill with God. So whenever there's a brokenness, broken relationship, broken unforgiveness, broken hearts, broken re minds, whenever it's broken, it's not of God. For God is whole and God is love. So why do we expect more? Because love is more. Pray for wholeness today. Now listen. Pray for God's gentle embrace. See, God has already forgiven. No, no, no. I, get, I get a lot of these. But God, get this, people. God has already forgiven. We have to accept. Let it go. You're not going to heaven with it. Let it go down here. You're not taking it up there. Let unforgiveness go and accept the forgiveness God has given you. Give to others. So God's gentle embrace is what I pray on each and every person here today. Let's stand for prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for going to the cross, cleansing us, forgiving us, accepting us, and Lord God, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the name that's above all names, we accept you, your love, and I pray a blessing and we receive it as a church, the gentle goodness, the embrace of God this morning. And so Lord, in areas of our lives that we need to let go, that have been offended or broken, we just plead the blood of Jesus right now and let it go. And we accept the love of God to rush in, to heal, to make whole, because you are love. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And you're dismissed.
Pastor Mark Ammerman, and I want to thank you for being with us today, and I certainly hope you are blessed. I want to invite you to live stream to the pastor's study on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, for a short message out of the Word of God, where God can lead you, guide you, comfort you, strengthen you in your life at this time. So again, thank you for being here, and I hope to see you Wednesday and Sundays.